In this eight-part series, I discuss problems common to philosophy and to religion. My focus is our struggle with nihilism, the fear that our lives and the world itself may be meaningless. In this third part, I address major directions in the spiritual history of mankind. Three orientations have prevailed in the world history of religion. The first orientation could be labeled the overcoming of the world. The most important example is original Buddhism, together with many strands of ancient Indian philosophy. The most important examples in the history of Western philosophy are the philosophy of Schopenhauer and the philosophy of Plato. The central idea of the overcoming of the world is that the experience of distinction and of change is illusory. True reality is both unified and hidden. By opening up access to this underlying reality, we can achieve both serenity and compassion. The second major orientation is the humanization of the world. The most significant example is classical Confucianism. For the humanization of the world, society exists in a meaningless natural void. In this meaningless void, however, we can create meaning. Our task is to develop a civilization that bears the imprint of our humanity. It should be organized on the basis of our reciprocal obligations to one another and our ability to imagine one another. The third major orientation in the history of the world is the struggle with the world. It is exemplified on one side by the Semitic religions of salvation, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and on the other side, by the modern secular projects of emancipation, the political programs of democracy, liberalism, and socialism, but also the cultural revolutionary program of personal emancipation, represented by the high and popular cultures of romanticism. The message of the struggle with the world is that we can and should embark on a trajectory of ascent that makes us more godlike. This trajectory may be impelled by an interaction between the saving work of a transcendent God who intervenes in history with our own efforts at self-construction or it may be wholly within our own power, without the help of such a deity. The religions representing these major orientations in world history arose in the period of several centuries before and after the birth of Christ that the philosopher Karl Jaspers called the Axial Age. This connected series of religious revolutions had many deep traits in common, despite the immense differences among these three directions. Four such similarities stand out. The first is that all these religions established a dialectic between transcendence and imminence. They denied that nature 
was divine and projected the divine beyond nature. The transcendent divine, however, must then seek embodiment in the world and above all in our experience of society. Even Confucianism recognized this dialectic of transcendence and imminence by locating the sacred in the experience of the personal and of interpersonal encounter rather than in nature. The second common trait of these religious revolutions was to deny the ultimate reality and authority of all the divisions within mankind, of class, of caste, of race, or of gender, to affirm the universality of our human nature against these divisions. The third shared attribute of these religious revolutions was that they all rejected what had been the predominant ethic of martial valor and self-assertion, the ethos of the fighting and ruling classes that governed the agrarian bureaucratic empires, the main entities in the societies in which these religions arose. In place of this ethic, they offered an ethic of renunciation, of universal empathy, of sacrificial fellow feeling. The fourth shared characteristic of these religious revolutions is that each of them presented what was in effect a two-sided ticket. One side of the ticket was a license to escape from this world, from the nightmare of history. The other side of the ticket was a provocation to change the world. There is an ambiguity that runs through all of these shared characteristics, and therefore through the three major spiritual directions. Are they simply a redescription of the world? or are they a program for the transformation of the world? One of the three directions, the struggle with the world, in its secular form of the projects of political and personal emancipation, has set the whole world on fire for over two centuries. It has aroused in the heart of ordinary humanity, the hope of greatness, the desire to expand our share in the attributes of the divine. This arousal is the point of departure for a new religious revolution in history.